it was 1989 and uh, I was looking for the opportunity to practice my English and uh, I had a friend working for the New Life Center at that time and he offered me the opportunity to volunteer as a receptionist and I did that for a little while but I also expanded my role a little bit as an interpreter in person uh, for the Spanish-speaking clients, right? And I used to uh, go with them to the lawyers' interviews, um, social workers, doctors, etc., teachers, and that allowed me to practice English in person as well. And that was the way I met people in the New Life Center and I came to know the New Life Center for the first time. At that time it was really very different. Uh, the first location that I knew about the center was actually the second location for the, in the history of the center, which was um, an upper floor in Woodbine and Danforth. And uh, it was just an office, just one office, and we were just five people. One of the things that are very important when you work for a small organization is that you have to be ready to do anything. Uh, small non-profit organizations need a lot of support from volunteers and from the, those who are the staff members. They don't have a uh, large staff, they don't have uh, a lot of money, they don't have a big facility, uh, which is obviously these are not good, but for those who are there, they have the opportunity to try new things and learn a lot. And that's how, in my case, I developed my career in the New Life Center. I started officially when I became an employee. Uh, I was hired to be a housing, housing counselor and I learned on the go. What I used to do is um, to um, actually escort the clients to see the houses. I wouldn't give them an address and let them go because they didn't speak English, most of them. And the other thing that I did for people, and this was the time when internet wasn't around yet, I would do a little bit of a booklet uh, with details about the neighborhood. So they would know where the closest bank is, the closest school, the closest supermarket, the main needs, the drugstore, if there is a family doctor or something like that, I will try to do a little bit of research and I would give them as much information as possible. And sometimes I would go with them for the first time to the supermarket or something like that, uh, just for them to become familiar. I thought uh, that of course gave me a lot of knowledge about the city because I was going around every single day never mind if it was winter or summer or whatever. And so I knew practically every corner of the city, like a taxi driver, right? And uh, so I could give a lot of information after, and I could go around the city. Within a few months, I knew a lot of spaces, and I, I was very well oriented about the city in general. The LINK program developed uh, in 1992 and then in 1995, three years after the LINK program started, um, the LINK coordinator at the time left. She moved to another town, I believe, and I applied for a position and, uh, and I got it. That was, uh, I remember that I was interviewed, my, my job interview was uh, with uh, um, two important members of the New Life Center, two board, ex-board members, uh, the late Bob Thyssen, a great individual and an unbelievable person, and uh, Barbara Simpson, uh, who was a board member at some point as well, um, interviewed me twice, I believe, and, uh, and then I, I got the position, I started, and, uh, and it was uh, very different, the, the kind of work was very different because I was dealing with a lot of people every day uh, coming and going uh, with uh, uh, matters of the school but personal matters too because they, you know, the New Life Center uh, is like a new home for them um, and when you are new 
in a place, the people you see every day become your counselor, your friend, your administrator, whatever it is, uh, and you sort of connect with them and seek their advice and their help. So we became that to the students, including the teachers, of course. And uh, yeah, that was my first experience. But I, there's something else that I would like to mention that happened at the beginning of LINK in 1992, 1995. Uh, if you remember, uh, the breakup of Yugoslavia was happening at that time and we were receiving refugees from all of the former uh, regions of uh, former Yugoslavia and they were our first LINK clients at the time. So our entire uh, LINK classroom were all former Yugoslavians. That's how LINK started. Then became more and more multicultural and the center became more multicultural as well. Um, many people, including ourselves, sometimes we used to see the New Life Center as a center for, for Hispanics only. We still are a center for Hispanics, but at that time we were already multicultural because at least half of our clientele were Yugoslavians, right? And we had staff that spoke their language, etc. And then I would say 93, 94, we, we stopped being a, a center for, for Latin Americans only uh, because like half of the workforce and the clientele were from other places. Well, I'm not the one to say because my English is not good and I, I've been working here for uh, half my life. Um, but I do have my perception as a learner because I, I keep learning, right? Um, I think nobody stops learning regardless of how old you are uh, or what happened with you. Um, with the language, we run classes. Uh, and I was a learner, a formal learner in a class as well, in many other languages as well. Uh, you do not learn the language in a class. You embrace the language and you learn it in the class and outside the class. I have a little bit of an idea. We know where, where we are heading with all the technology we have. So I believe that the classes for LINK or anything else will not be different. Uh, technology is so, uh, actually crawling into every single aspect of our lives, whether we are talking about <laughs> how to operate a toilet, or how to use a camera, or how to communicate with your family, or uh, how to use the fridge. Everything is technology, computers, communication, etc. And I guess the class, the Lean class, will not be different. We are at the verge of implementing LMS. And I see these um, advances as incrementing or increasing the, the tools available to you to learn a language or to learn anything else. I see it as one more element. Sometimes you will still need a dictionary or a grammar book or an explanation from a teacher, or an explanation from a co-worker or a classmate, or going into Google and getting the information that you're looking for. So it will be a, one more element uh, in the variety of other elements, within the variety of other elements you can use to learn. Almost every day has a reward. Uh, days are very different in an agency with lots of people coming in and out. Maybe not so right now when most of the services are done online. Before, the center had a lot of interaction with lots of people. Um, we were a smaller center and that gave us the opportunity to serve people on the spot. Uh, we did take appointments, but we also were open and people would come, wait for a little bit, and then they were seen by someone. Uh, that cannot happen now because of the size of the agency. That would be impossible. We try to keep that side of the profile alive 
because there are some people that cannot deal with appointments the way most people do. Uh, and we are ready for them, but sometimes it's very difficult to, to accomplish what, we, what they need and give them the service. At, at, um, in the early times, I would say half of the workload was um, walk-ins. And so the center was very lively. People in and out constantly. And sometimes people, they knew each other or not, and they became sort of acquainted with each other waiting for us. We, as a settlement agency, we do that education piece with the newcomer. But we never talk to the local guys who are supposed to welcome newcomers. And I believe that that's, there's something missing in there. Uh, and I see, and this is a personal opinion, it might not be shared by many people, but that's how I feel. I believe that there is a role for the settlement agencies to be the link with K about that missing piece. <clears throat> we should be helping the newcomer adjust to Canada. We should help the locals adjust to newcomers. So the communication is a more uh, genuine, intense, and we learn from each other. There is only benefits to connecting to other people. You may or not agree with others, but they are human beings like uh, anybody else. And when you look at them in depth and you scratch the surface a little bit, you want to encounter more similarities than differences. And when you speak to others, there you find things that are similar to your culture and with someone who comes from around the globe, right? So that means that there is something underneath uh, that has to do with the human nature of everybody that is, it, it, it makes us more similar than different. Uh, for the anniversary and um, forever, I would like the clients, our clients, to be successful, right? Um, there is a purpose in having a center like this one operating, and there was a purpose in having the center being created by the Puricellis. And look at that today, for almost 40 years, yes, 40 years, um, uh, in, in business and uh, uh, having assisted so many people, I would like people to be happy in Canada. And being happy means, whatever it means to you, is fine with me. I'm telling you the basics. Having a, an affordable house, an affordable housing arrangement, a rewarding job that you both like and provide you for your needs, uh, see your children grow in a new society and integrate and be the, your personal link to the country because that's an, another step, another level. Um, and not, not only that people come to see how they can find a job and pay the bills. There are many things that you could do to be happy in Canada that have nothing to do with jobs. Yes, jobs are essential. There's no possibility for you to be happy if you don't have the resources, right? But there are so many things that uh, you could enjoy in Canada that your life will be uh, more rewarding when you grasp those possibilities of doing whatever you want to do here. If you like art, you do art. If you like photography, you do photography. If you like singing, you do singing. Uh, whatever it is. In my case, it's contact with the nature. It's very important to me. Uh, for anybody who goes for five minutes up north, it's like a, like you've been there for a, for a month uh, and you become a different person, right? I love uh, my connection with nature in Canada, at least with what I know. I don't know the whole country yet. But that's very important that it's there for everybody to enjoy. And uh, I would like everybody to find that enjoyment in whatever they want to. Uh, and 
at that moment you will feel truly at home. At least that's how I feel it. 